Hello everyone, uh, I am Dr. Burhanuddin Hamza. Uh, so basically I think what we are going to be talking about uh, in general would be uh, between an MD and an MBBS. So let's look at what they stand for. So I'm sure a lot of people are curious as to what they actually are and what the difference is. Uh, so when you look at an MD, it is Doctor of Medicine. And when you look at MBBS, it is Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, right? So very important thing before you guys, before I go into the depth of talking about the fundamental differences, you need to understand that there are two MDs. There is an undergraduate level MD and there is a postgraduate level MD, right? So just because you get an undergraduate level MD from some university, right? That doesn't mean that is equivalent to one of the MDs that a consultant in Sri Lanka has. Because a consultant in Sri Lanka will have his undergraduate, it can be an MBPS and an MD, and later he will move into the postgraduate level examinations. Uh, for example, if he's actually doing it in uh, uh, surgery or it could be, you know, even gen as working towards going into dermatology, that would be a postgraduate level MD, right? So. On an on a undergraduate level, there are a few key uh, differences, right? So if I start by the basic difference which everyone knows, is the amount of exposure that you get in a clinical setting, right? So people will say, yes, obviously the amount of years in an MD program is more than the number of years in an MBBS program. Absolutely true. If you look at an MBBS program, it would it would be between four and a half to five years, whereas an MD program would contain six years. So how does it? How I mean the, the number of years do make a big difference because it increases the number of clinical exposure. But you need to also understand that apart from the foundation level, there is also a lot of uh, integrated, extensive uh, clinical exposure that you would get in an MD curriculum. Now if I give an example, uh, if you take the university in Belarus, which I have got my MD from, uh, Vitev State Medical University, we had a lot of classes in a lot of different different uh, hospitals uh, which would which gave us more of an exposure. What I mean by that is we had a separate hospital for infectious diseases. So whenever we had any cases where we wanted to actually you know see the the management plan, the diagnosis, how they diagnose, how they do the investigation panels, what are the key differences with regard to you know basic investigations, we had to go into those hospitals and we had extended period of you know clinical rotations in that particular hospital so that gave us a better exposure that's just the superficial difference right between an MD and MBBS and I think what I would want to you know stop and explain would be the key difference which is very very important right the key difference between an MD and MBBS is how I would like to put it is you ask your son if it is if, if I'm talking to a parent right what they want to become now whenever you ask i mean during my time when people would ask someone what is your ambition in life they would say i want to be an engineer i want to be a doctor i want to be a teacher i want to be a pilot those were the sort of you know uh, fields that people were interested in but currently right if you ask children what they want to become they will not say i want to be a doctor or an engineer they'll say I want to be a cardiothoracic surgeon, I want to be a neurologist, I want to become, a, become an oncologist, I want to become a hematologist, I want to become a, a civil engineer, I want to become an aeronautical engineer, I want to become a mechanical engineer. You know, see, so you understand that the children in this generation have already thought about specialization. And if children have thought to that extent, right, if I have to compare uh, in that basis, an MD provides a platform for those children to pursue different, different, different fields of specializations that are available so that they will know which field to pursue after they've completed their undergraduate level. Yeah. Another, yeah, stop. Right. So I think a lot of uh, people have this uh, a misunderstanding that an MD that you get from the North American part of the world or you get from Europe is not recognized in Sri Lanka. Let me stop you there and say it is recognized. 
right? It is absolutely recognized. And there could be a follow-up question asking me, okay, it might be recognized, but students who get an MD find it difficult to come and adapt into the MBBS curriculum which students get in Sri Lanka. Uh, well, I mean, it, it all depends on how much of foundation that you have got in your medical school and how you have applied that foundation in your clinical setting and how well versed you are with, with dealing with patients. Now, I look at it in this way, right? Uh, when I was in Belarus, I had a very good foundation from my university. I applied that foundation with my clinical rotations and my clinical exposure. And because of that, I had a reasonable amount of, you know, clinical experience with regard to patients, which is why it was easy for me to come back to Sri Lanka and grasp the concepts, right? Grasp the concepts of how to treat patients. But yes, you might be right. The places where you get an MD or you're offered an MD do not have some of these tropical diseases uh, that are readily present in Sri Lanka. For example, you look at dengue fever, which was never a problem in uh, my country, I mean in the country that I graduated from, right? So they wouldn't have any clue as to how extensive the management plan is. Right. Uh, if you look at the, 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 the international literature about dengue fever management, all it says is fluid management. But only the Sri Lankan doctors would know there is so much of this fluid management. Right? How, when we should be giving fluids, when we should be giving crystalloids over, you know, colloids, when should we be thinking about, you know, uh, you know, uh, putting the patient on something called a critical monitoring chart, when do you catheterize the patient, when would you, when would be the possibilities of you giving blood, when is the possibilities of you transfusing platelets, right? So there's a lot of extensive uh, sort of, you know, uh, a manual that we have in Sri Lanka that we follow. So yes, the understanding of that manual requires some sort of clinical exposure plus foundation. If you do not have that, obviously it, it would be very difficult for you to understand. So for me, I grasped it quickly because I had that good foundation level that I applied on to this and it was easy for me. So don't ever be uh, of that kind of, you know, understanding that it becomes very difficult, right, for a person who has got an MD for him or her to come to a country where they give, where they are only giving an MBBS, uh, whether it is difficult uh, for them to actually, you know, treat patients. It all depends on the spectrum of diseases, right? So that is what it all ends up to. Uh, another very important thing with regard to an MD, uh, in Sri Lanka it is considered at the equal level. But if you look at countries like USA, uh, UK and the European Union, right, if you are planning to migrate, migra migrate to those countries, uh, those countries actually, you know, prefer students who have got an MD or an MBBS because of the extensive uh, knowledge that they have as to the curriculum is extensive, that is one. A second thing is, there are some prerequisites that a student in an MD will have, for example, research, right? Uh, for example, a lot of interactive studies, uh, awareness programs that are embedded into the medical curriculum that show uh, these medical counselors that this student does not only have the knowledge and the inept of, you know, treating patients, but he has an understanding of how he or she can apply that knowledge and how he or she can make that hospital that that hospital that that hospit the hospital that the, the 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 doctor is going to go to a better hospital. So it shows uh, you know how much of uh, you know not just the knowledge but experience that they've got in uh, not just treating patients in a, a clinical setting but in an administrative level. Uh, that knowledge is also available, so which makes them more uh, capable of taking up that role. So let's now look into the most important difference between an MD and an MBBS, right? Uh, so I think I have gone on to explaining about the recognition aspect, about how uh, well known each of them are in different aspects of the world. But this is I think the most crucial point that I would actually want to, you know, highlight on. Uh, so firstly, if you look at Sri Lanka, right, these are just examples that, I'm, that are just coming up into my head and I'm just telling you all. Uh, if you look at Sri Lanka, if you develop an allergy, 
let's just say that you had some sort of uh, you know pineapple and now you know you you were finding it you know difficult to actually breathe or you know you're you're itching you've got some rashes or you know your face has swollen up right so that clearly means that you maybe you're allergic to pineapple right now who do you go to in Sri Lanka you would go to a general physician right because a general physician would know how to manage it I mean you go to any doctor he would but if you look at Belarus right uh, there where we learn if a patient is having allergies they don't go to a general physician but they go to someone called a consultant allergologist right so in Sri Lanka we still don't have that kind of uh, field developing it is coming up but you know we have some pediatric allergologists but it's not to a major extent like the way it is in the countries that follow the MD program right so I remember we were going for classes we had rotations on allergology where we were going for classes learning about the whole field and also we were treating patients who are allergic to peanuts who are allergic to chocolates who are allergic to coffee and how different different trials were carried out on them so that they could actually be allergy free and have the possibility of eating chocolate for the first time in their life right so that's something that we covered in the MD program another important aspect if you look at the undergraduate level and uh, MD versus an undergraduate MBBS the example that I give is surgery right and when you look at surgery right the subject surgery is such such a subject where people who are actually in the undergraduate program they think that as soon as you're done with an MBBS you are able to operate on a patient that is absolutely wrong right what is important is that a person who has finished an undergraduate level MBBS has a knowledge in the surgical diseases but does not know on the know-hows of how a surgery is being done right so let's just take a simple example right we take an example of appendicitis right so that's an uh, inflammation of the appendix right so if someone has that problem the mainstay management would be if it is an uncomplicated one right it is to actually you know remove the appendix let's just say that in your final exam in the surgery exam your case is an appendicitis so the consultants will be like ah, okay right you've diagnosed this so you'll say sir first of all it is a clinical diagnosis but I will confirm by doing an ultrasound scan and if uh, to see if there is any other co possibilities it can be a UTI if it's a female it can be an ectopic pregnancy blah 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 and you know they might ask what is the management you will tell them that I'll keep the patient fasting I'll do some blood investigations to confirm uh, I will actually you know prepare uh, so that you know if by any chance we are planning to do an appendicectomy you know inform the theater you know blah you know you will inform all of that and you know mainstay management will be to remove the appendix that is when your viva will finish in an undergraduate MBBS level whereas in an undergraduate MD level uh, exam the consultants will be like okay right you want to do an appendicectomy okay you have brought the patient to theater where will you make the incision what type of incisions are there what do you know about the gridiron incision what do you know about the lance incision what do you know about the pirigoff incision so different different incisions they will ask you what are the differences right not just it doesn't end there they'll say okay what type of scalpel are you going to use are you going to use 11 size blade are you going to use a 22 and you know 15 what blade are you going to use right uh, afterwards are you going to use the uh, the bovi or are you going to use a diatomy right how are you going to separate the subcutaneous tissue are there any important vessels you're going to look out for how are you going to actually access the fascia are you going to cut the fascia using the scissor or are you going to you know use the scalpel and just cut it superficially and then you know go through the, uh, the fascia in what direction will you cut the fascia how are you going to separate the muscles are you going to cut the uh, muscles or are you going to separate the muscle how will you access the peritoneal cavity how will you lift the peritoneal cavity how will you after entering into the peritoneal cavity if you can't find the appendix how will you find the appendix how, what are the other places the appendix can can you know go in like for example retrocecal pelvic uh, appendix so you understand these are a few of the questions that we will be asked in our undergraduate MD level so we will have sufficient knowledge about how the surgery is being done 
whereas in an undergraduate MBBS level, these things are not highlighted on, which is very very important for a person like me who is interested in specializing in surgery. It gave me the grasp. It gave me the know-how that okay, this is how it's done, and that kind of helped me to know that this is where I want to specialize in. Thank you.